The name of Radek Stepanek might not be terribly familiar to the average armchair tennis viewer in the UK. With a ranking of 48, he's unseeded at Wimbledon and only once reached the quarterfinals back in 2006. But at the ripe old age of 34, he's the highest ranked of the old-fashioned serve volley players in tennis today. Until 10 years or so ago, serve volley was the norm in tennis and especially at Wimbledon. But nowadays, we expect both players to slug it out from the baseline, approaching the net only occasionally. You can see that the grass these days tends to get worn in different places, with very few players rushing into the net behind their serve. But what has brought about this change in the game? Fast playing surfaces like the Wimbledon grass had always suited net players, with baseliners having less time to make their passing shots than they had on other surfaces. For many years, volleyers had dominated at Wimbledon. Oh, that's phenomenal. That really is phenomenal. Even devout baseliners like Bjorn Borg would adapt his game to serve and volley on the grass. But by the mid-1990s, raw serving power began to take over as racket technology improved, allowing bigger and bigger exactly. serves. Some believe that the transformation in the game since then dates back to this men's singles final between Pete Sampras and Goran Ivanisevic in 1994. Both players had booming serves, there were very few rallies, and the public began to tire of what they saw as boring tennis. During the late 1990s and early 2000s, the All England Club began taking steps to counter this problem. Over the years, the constitution of the grass was changed to make the surface slower, and the balls were given a little more felt, making them slightly heavier. Both of these changes giving the baseline players more of a chance. But what the All England Club perhaps didn't realise was that the continuing improvements in racket technology, while seeming to benefit the serve volleyers, would eventually have the opposite effect. The changes didn't blunt the power of the big servers. Only Goran Ivanisevic and Richard Krychek broke up Sampras's dominance at Wimbledon over the next few years. But eventually, they diminished the might of the volleyer, ironically, just as Britain was producing its finest serve volleyer in decades. By the late 1990s, the serve, much more than the volley, was the key to success. The last serve volleyer to win Wimbledon without a huge serve was Stefan Edberg back in 1990. But while all this was going on, tennis coaches at grassroots level had already realised that the improvements in racket technology could transform not only serving power, but the way the whole game was being played. You'd probably have to have been born in the 70s or earlier to remember tennis rackets like this. It looks more like a squash racket today, but these small-headed rackets, be they wooden or aluminium framed, were the norm until the early 1980s. Players were taught to hit forehands using the old continental grip, or the shaking hands grip, as Jimmy Connors has called it, following the racket straight through the ball. Most players taught up until the 1970s and early 1980s used this kind of grip, although there were exceptions. Bjorn Borg and other players brought up on the higher bouncing clay courts used what was called a semi-western grip, where the racket was turned slightly to brush over the ball, involving greater use of the wrist and imparting more topspin. The main advantages of topspin are that it makes the ball fall much faster, so you can hit the ball harder and it stays in, while the dip on the ball also makes volleying much harder for net rushing opponents. But in those days, using heavy topspin had its disadvantages. The racket head having to brush over the ball as opposed to hitting straight through it meant with small racket heads there was very little margin for error. Playing heavy topspin shots increased the chances of a mishit. Secondly, the old rackets were very heavy and the increased contortion of arm and wrist involved carried a risk of injury. But by the mid to late 1980s, with rackets getting lighter and racket heads getting larger, these risks diminished. Forehand grips in particular became more extreme and by the early 1990s most top players were using heavy topspin. Andre Agassi even managed to break the serve volley monopoly of Wimbledon in 1992 and Jim Courier reached the final the following year their heavy topspin games making life difficult for the serve volleying establishment. The grass was still relatively fast in those days, so against big serving opponents, they were still fighting against the tide. But with fewer downsides to playing with extreme topspin grips, children started to be coached very differently. <laughs>
Of course, these changes would take a while to feed through to the centre court, and it would be 10 to 15 years before this new generation of players reached the top of the rankings. Most of the top players today were born in the late 1980s and learned to play with the bigger-headed rackets. They hit their forehands with a much more extreme grip and can impart far more topspin on the ball than was dreamed possible even 15 years ago. Another hugely important development in recent years is the improvement in racket string technology. The string is gripping the ball far more firmly, allowing for even more topspin. These days, Rafael Nadal can achieve more topspin with a lunging flick of the wrist than Borg could achieve with a full swing using the old rackets and strings. Passing shots like this classic forehand against Federer in 2008 would have been unthinkable in those days. With this new generation of topspin hitters firmly established at the top of the game, to come into the net behind anything less than a near-perfect serve would be reckless. So these days, even aggressive players like Roger Federer do it only as an occasional surprise tactic, and the likes of Radek Stepanek are few and far between. If Wimbledon were to revert back now to the lighter balls and faster grass, then despite the changes in racket and stringing technology, a genuine serve volume might still have a chance, but it's probably too late for anyone to take advantage, because with the game having changed so much, all the serve volleyers have died out.